Good morning and welcome to worship on this third Sunday of Easter. We continue in Acts of the Apostles today with a story about Peter healing a man who was born lame. It's a story that shows us how Jesus's ministry of healing was something that was passed on through the power of the Holy Spirit to the apostles after Jesus had died um, and ascended to heaven. For us, it's a promise that God's will is that all should have that opportunity to live life to the fullest, to be raised up, whatever that might look like, so that all can enjoy the fullness of life. There's a couple of notes about our worship this morning. I want to thank our choir members, um, some of whom recorded themselves singing to our hymn of the day. And not to worry, we made sure we maintained our physical distancing. They did the recordings in their own home. And then Ed, our music director, um, mixed them all together. So a huge thank you to Ed for making that possible. Also, uh, during our prayers of intercession, we did not have the news that Rodney was in hospital until after they were already recorded. And so when we get to that part in the prayers, uh, when you're invited to lift up by name folks that you would like to remember in prayers for healing and comfort, uh, we invite you to name Rodney and anyone else who you would desire prayer for this morning. I'll invite us now to begin with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Holy Lord, your followers gave to your children something more powerful and more valuable than riches. They gave healing and hope. Bring healing and hope into our world and show us evidence of your presence in our lives. Amen. A reading from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. A man, lame from birth, was being carried in. People would lay him daily at the gate of the temple, called the Beautiful Gate, so that he could ask for alms from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Stand up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Jumping up, he stood and began to walk. And he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God, and they recognized him as the one who used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. A man lays at the temple gate. We don't know his name. The only thing we're told about him is that he was born lame. Unable to make it to the temple on his own, every day his friends carry him and lay him down at the temple gate so he can ask passing worshippers for their spare change. It was pretty much the only way a disabled person could hope to provide for themselves in Peter and John's time, to depend on the charity of strangers. And each day, all the man can hope for is that he'll get enough to see him through another day. I'm struck by this image of the friends carrying the man day after day to the temple gate. It's certainly a, a kind gesture, even a gracious one. People doing what they can to help out a neighbor or a friend in a society that didn't have any kind of social safety net to help him get by, to help him survive. But to me, it also highlights the injustice and inequality that is built into human societies. Last month, the pop star Madonna 
made headlines for posting a message to social media about how COVID-19 is the great equalizer, that it doesn't discriminate based on wealth or talent or fame or intelligence. Of course, she recorded uh, the video of her giving this message while she was sitting in a beautiful, luxurious bathroom um, in a milky bath sprinkled with rose petals. And her message was pretty quickly denounced for being out of touch. Because while it's true that any of us can contract this virus, some people are much more vulnerable than others. One of the most helpful images I've heard used to explain this is that we may all be in the same storm, but we're not all in the same boat. Those with more resources and financial security have the capacity to weather the storm this virus is creating in a way that those with fewer resources and those who don't have financial security uh, do not. And already we're seeing, especially in the US, for example, that poorer people and racialized people are suffering from this virus in greater numbers. Those who need to keep working to pay the bills, those who live in cramped public housing or in shelters where physical distancing just isn't possible. The reality, contrary to what Madonna said, is that as we ride out this storm, there are some who are sailing in their private yachts, while others are crammed aboard life rafts. As the man sits at the temple gate for yet another day, depending on the kindness of strangers, it turns out that this day isn't a day like any other. Peter and John, two of Jesus's apostles, happen to walk past him on their way to afternoon prayer. The man asked them for alms, money that religious people would set aside to give to the poor. I'm sure this man is used to people walking right by, either quickly tossing him a coin or nothing at all. Brief interactions. But that's not what happens here. Peter and John stop. They make eye contact with the man and he meets their gaze as they stare intently at him. There's something uncomfortable about this moment, but it's also deeply powerful. They say that eyes are the window to the soul. And if you've ever held eye contact with someone for uh, a prolonged period of time, you know how true this is. Uh, it's a very intimate thing to do. Peter and John don't have any money to give to this man, but they take the time to stop, to really see him, to make a connection. And as we see, they have something that they can give him that is worth far more than a few alms. As I imagine it, uh, still maintaining eye contact, Peter takes the man by the hand and with the power of the Spirit, raises him up. All of a sudden, the man who was lame now jumps and leaps and praises God. I don't personally know anyone who has the power to heal the way we see Peter heal this man. What I'm drawn to is that image of Peter's hand reaching out as he helps this man to stand as he raises him up. As the COVID pandemic continues to highlight some of the inequalities in our society, this really is an opportunity for us to do some deep reflection and some soul searching. As pretty much everything in our lives and in our world has been turned upside down, we have been given an opportunity to question the way we've always done things. To ask ourselves, as that message I've seen going around on Facebook asks, in the rush to return to normal, which parts of normal are worth rushing back to? In this time, we now see with different eyes who the essential workers really are. 
They're the retail workers, the delivery drivers and truck drivers, farmers and farm laborers. They're the home and healthcare workers, those who work in factories and manufacturing, among many others whose work has not traditionally been valued enough in terms of how they're compensated. Peter and John remind us that God's kingdom is a world in which all people are raised up regardless of their contributions, where barriers are removed, where inequalities are counterbalanced, where everyone has access to a dignified income, and where all people are valued and cared for as beloved children of God. We are still a ways from being through this pandemic. And so during this gift of time, as we think about what kind of world we want to live in and the kind of world God desires for us, may we look for more ways to plant care, compassion, and social equity into our communities and our world. Because as we prioritize these values of care, compassion, and social equity, they will take root, they will grow, and they will create a world where all God's children are able to live life to the fullness that God desires for each one of us. Amen. Celebrating the victory of love over death, we offer our prayers to God. Each petition ends with the words, God of Easter, and you're invited to respond saying, hear our prayer. Let us pray. God who comes in bread, you sustain life through the most basic of foods. Show us your risen presence in the basics of life. God of Easter, hear our prayer. God who comes in wine, you enrich life in community and celebration. Show us how to live as a community, even as we struggle with our current realities. God of Easter, God who comes in story, you remind us who we are through familiar words and through the unfamiliar drama of our lives. Open our hearts to the story you are telling us, the story of which we are a part, the story you are composing for the sake of creation. God of Easter, hear our prayer. God who comes in sadness, your presence is promised most profoundly when we are hurting, when we are overwhelmed, when we see no way through. Reassure us that you do walk with us in our difficult days. Give us faith when we lose hope. We pray especially for the people of Nova Scotia and all communities touched by violence. God of Easter, hear our prayer. God who comes in illness, we remember those who are sick, 
those whose health is compromised, those who are facing death. We also remember those who are serving them in their pain and isolation. Today we pray especially for the family of Norma Dietz and all who we name in our hearts. May we all support each other as we embrace the ministry of healing to which you call us. God of Easter, hear our prayer. God who comes in the ordinary, free us from looking for you only in the special and the extraordinary. Free us to encounter you in the everyday. God of Easter, hear our prayer. We pray this in the name of our risen and living Savior, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive God's blessing. May the one who brought Jesus forth from the dead fill you with hope and raise you to new life. Almighty God, blessed Trinity, be with you now and forever. Amen. God be with you this week. I continue to pray for you and I ask that you would also continue to pray for me. God is with us until we meet again. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.